Hello, Ender Sword here again with another little video that's uh, just designed to show some of the odds and ends of the game. I was at a uh, little LAN event at an internet cafe recently and just talking to one of uh, the lower league players there and we had mentioned something about uh, one of the add-ons for Terran turning a different color and he was unaware that that happened in the game to indicate that it was actually uh, doing work or anything like that and we get to discussing some of the little visual cues that happen in the game that maybe not everyone is aware of. Some newer players or even some long-term ones just aren't aware that this happens for another race or aren't aware that it happens to their own race because they've never really been looking for it or anything like that. So there's just little things that can uh, help you determine what's going on, whether things are actually active and uh, what's going to come out of a building, whether units have certain upgrades, uh, things like that. So I just wanted to go through fairly quickly. This may take a while. There are actually a couple dozen of them that I wanted to point out, but I'll try and just go through one by one here and uh, point out all the key things that uh, we're doing. So the first, uh, just to give you an example of what I'm talking about, uh, there's the normal little marine fellas here. They usually look like this basic little guy. Uh, of course, the upgrade that they can have, which is visible, is the combat shield. There you see that to indicate that they've got this upgrade, the little shield comes on their arm. That indicates that they now have more hit points than they actually used to have. The Hellion is an example of one of the things that doesn't visually indicate that it has something until it actually fires. So an unupgraded Hellion firing at something is going to fire with the orange flame. And of course the reason we call the upgrade blue flame is once it does have it, it's going to fire with a blue flame. So you can't tell from the actual Hellion itself. It still looks uh, blue up here. But once it does fire, you're going to see a blue flame and know that it does a lot more uh, damage to your units. So beware of it. Uh, the other thing that actually upgrades as a unit is the battle cruiser. Here you can see that the front of the battle cruiser is closed off and there's kind of nothing significant in the middle. Uh, if we do upgrade the battle cruiser, then we're going to see that when the Yamato cannon comes, a actual cannon forms in the front and we now get pulsing light in the middle similar to the Death Star type beam. Uh, where it's pulsing around. So that's how you know whether or not you have to worry about Yamato, can uh, Yamato cannons. Um, other things for Terran I don't believe have any sort of visible upgrade. Uh, one other thing that you can see for Terran that does have a visual cue, this is a bunker while it's empty. This is a bunker when something's in it. You'll notice that the lights go on, the top actually sinks, and this little door on the side actually closes. When no one's in it, that door is open, the stairs are up, it's taller, no lights are on. So if you're walking by something, sometimes uh, you don't know whether something's empty, they've emptied it out or not or whatever, that is a good indicator. So that one is a useful one to have. Um, in terms of actual buildings, what's building inside a building, you won't always know what is building inside for the Terran, but they will flash and there will tend to be sparks and flashing coming out of most Terran buildings. So as we build SCVs there, obviously this is a unit tester, everything's going to build super fast to so try and uh, get what I'm saying as we see it. Uh, the barracks is also going to flash during it. You'll notice the lights in the windows flashing. Here we're going to have flashing inside the factory as we build a lot here. And again, sparks coming out. For the starport, the main platform here, here will actually lower as we build. Ready to blunder. And those actually get in my way. But you can see there, that does actually lower as it's building. Of course, it'll stay lower uh, when you're in normal build times. The other thing to note as uh, someone playing against a Terran or as a Terran, uh, the light on the tech labs, all tech labs are completely interchangeable, so they're the same really. So the light on it is usually yellow like this. When you are doing an upgrade, it is green and you'll get uh, this part here uh, spinning and this part moving a little quicker so you'll know that something's activating. You can 
obviously know if you are really early in the game, you come into the base, you see that this platform's down and that turns green, well, he's probably building a banshee and researching cloak or, or something like that. So it okay. is a good indicator as to what's actually going on. Uh, other little indicators, the uh, factory here, or the uh, ghost academy here, sorry, uh, does okay. pulse up and down, gets more lights going on, and kind of emits smoke, whereas it very slowly just uh, moves these rings up and down. The fusion core, probably a lot of people have seen day nine do his fusion core uh, impression. They again very slowly oscillate up and down. They'll go faster and much stronger when it's actually researching something. Again here the speed of the ring in the middle is what determines whether or not the armory is upgrading and the engineering bay similar to that as a brighter flashing light and you'll see this uh, piston moving in and out as it goes. Uh, the com uh, command center itself, when you're upgrading to an orbital command, you're going to see more of an orange tint to what's uh, going on. I wish this one was a little slower so that you could actually see the build process. The planetary fortress, you're not getting as much uh, orange, it's just coming straight up with the cannon. So if you see something, you glance at it, you don't know which one he's going to and you don't have a chance to click on it, that's a way to indicate uh, what the player is actually going to do, and I think that may be all for the um, for the Terran. So I'll move on to the uh, Protoss player here. Protoss player, the warp gate, um, even at a distance, even if you're over here warping in, you can always know whether a warp gate has actually been used because it will quickly flash above itself as it's warping a unit somewhere else in. So we'll do that for a couple seconds and let you know that that warp gate is being used uh, somewhere in the map. So if you're nearby it, but maybe you don't know where things are being warped in, that would certainly tip you off. The gateway itself is going to sparkle and these will move up to indicate that it's actually working and it's going to get a ring of energy there so you know whether something is building in the gateway itself. Uh, the Nexus, when that is building a probe, you don't really see a lot of anything uh, going on. There is a little tiny bit on the ring there, uh, whereas the command center when that's building is actually much brighter. What you do get out of the Nexus is chrono boost. You'll see a shock go up telling you that they just chrono boosted something, and on the building they chrono boosted, you'll get this uh, kind of speeding up, circly clocky thing uh, going on here to indicate that they've kind of tried to speed up time. It actually make more sense if that actually went clockwise as opposed to counterclockwise, but whatever. And the mothership, uh, which again will build fairly quickly here, but usually takes a long time, is going to launch this beam of energy up into the air coming out of the top and that's going to indicate that a mothership is potentially coming out. There will be a steady beam coming out of that nexus to indicate that that is on its way. The robotics facility usually is in this position. Uh, if we start to build out of it, we'll actually open up and this will be glowing in the middle and that indicates that you are building something in uh, that robotics facility. The Stargate is a lot more telling. Uh, the Stargate is not only going to tell you that it's working, but it's going to tell you exactly what is building inside of it. So all you have to do is take a look inside the rings, and we're going to know that that's clearly a carrier. Again, it will be there for a lot longer in reality, but you can see the image of an actual carrier uh, building in that area. A void ray, again, we can see that there's an actual void ray building in that area. These. Maybe I should have done this actually intentionally supply blocking myself because well, it doesn't even show if you're supply blocked. That's actually interesting to know. I didn't even know that. Uh, but when it does start building there, you're going to again see that you can completely see the phoenix inside and you'll know exactly what uh, what your opponent is building before it ever comes out of there. Uh, could have put one of the pylons over here 
you can see that this is a photon cannon, obviously when it is unpowered. Um, so it's going to be down, the little door on top is going to be closed. It's going to seem darker. There is no power to that, so you don't have to worry about it. As that pylon comes in and provides energy to it in about five seconds, you're going to see the little eye pop up and bam, it's now fully powered, that's floating on top of it, and that cannon is now good to go. So if you weren't aware of that, that's what uh, is going on. The fleet beacon um, just kind of glows a bit. Uh, this ball will kind of contract down. It will just change from this very steady slow motion as it's building. You're very rarely going to see that one happen anyway. The robotic stay usually is uh, just kind of stationary like this. As we do upgrades, the arms are going to move. It's going to look like it's making things out of these little cubes in the middle. Uh, the Templar Archive slowly pulses up and down. When research is going, it's going to go up and down a lot more dramatically and a lot more quickly as opposed to the slow pulse. Uh, here we get slow pulses of light in the Twilight Council. With upgrades, these arms are actually going to move in and out and indicate that something's going on here. The forge, again, slowly kind of pulsing with light going. It's going to open up in this area and you're going to see a spinning effect there. And similar at the cybernetics core, we're going to see spinning and lighting up in these lights here to indicate that that is working. So it's important to know some of those, uh, just to know whether you want to pick off a key piece of tech. Say the Templar Archives is going you know that the only thing that it can research is storm. So if that's actively researching something and there's some high Templar out on the field, maybe that's a bigger priority target for you to uh, snipe and try and take out because it is a little more uh, important to you. Uh, the other thing in terms of a unit uh, that I'll show you here is just the void ray charge. I know most people do know this one since, uh, to be honest, it's one of the first things that uh, probably new players pick up and like to play with. But uh, the Void Ray, when targeting something, has one beam going, then two, then three, and then the beam gets wider, thicker, and it's a lot stronger. So the power actually increases, and as long as those stay charged, even if it's not firing, all three go and bam, it's back to normal. If it starts firing again, it's now going to fire with the uncharged beam. Charging up, thickens up, that's doing a lot more damage, and then after a couple of seconds go by, loses its charge, goes back to normal. So that pretty much covers our protons. Uh, for the third player, always just get used to what these three look like. There may be times that you don't really want to waste time clicking on it. Hatchery a lot lower, um, only these little spikes here. The layer is a lot more dramatic and the high of the spikes go all the way to the top. So just get used to glancing at those and immediately knowing which one you're looking at. You're not going to have to actually uh, click on them. Uh, in terms of lings, lings are again a pretty obvious one that most people probably know but I just thought I'd point it out. These are normal lings moving at normal speed here, and they're not too special. When we go to upgrade the speed, lings acquire okay. wings, okay. and these are now speed lings that are going to go a lot uh, faster. So obviously watch out for that upgrade. It's one of the certainly most important to know. If you don't know that one, you're going to die quite a bit. Upgrading to a couple bane lings here. Uh, you can see that the Baneling, when in normal speed, is just kind of walking around and just kind of crawling from place to place, hobbling back and forth. That's how you know it's at normal speed. When it gets upgraded, no actual physical change happens to it, so we don't see anything uh, different externally when it's just stationary but the bane links are now rolling from location to location. So that's a quick way to know without actually having to gauge its speed to know that these are now fast, wing, or fast uh, bane links. So when you see them rolling around like that, then we know they can hunt you down a lot better. 
Uh, the next thing to do is just kind of their buildings. Um, a lot of these Zerg buildings just kind of pulsate up and down as if they're breathing or moving very slowly or wailing in the wind or something like that. Uh, generally speaking, when you do the upgrades here, it just increases the speed of a lot of that. So they'll do it a little more violently. Uh, so you can see there just a little more violent reaction in the EVO chamber you'll get a sense that it's a little more active as opposed to completely at a rest state. The infestation pit, very similar. It's just kind of pulsing up and down, but when we do upgrade, okay. it's a lot more violently up and down, actually uh, kind of moving a little more. That's how you're going to know. Nothing really is going on here. Just to let you know the difference between where the entry point was and where the exit point, exit point is, this is the worm end. That's the NIDUS network, so this is where he planted it. But functionally, it is the same, even if he loses that end but has two worm heads to it. It doesn't matter. He can't plant another one, but he can still transfer between the two. The spire uh, is actually going to kind of breathe through the top. The uh, top hole <coughs> will uh, open and close as that okay. is actually <laughs> upgrading. The greater spire on these blue markings here on top, it's going to move faster and actually light up a little okay. bit as it's upgraded. Uh, the ultralisk cavern, again, will also kind of pulse up and down a little bit more. These green veins get a lot lighter. Hydralisk den, this little mouth in the front is going to open up, okay. open and close as it goes and move a lot quicker. Uh, the roach is a little neat. They've got a little thing hidden in there, and when you do your upgrades here, he kind of okay. pokes his head out and okay. says hi. So he'll kind of be peeking out there, and again, the movement's just going to be a lot faster. Uh, same with the bane link, and the water in the spawning pool is just going to vibrate a lot okay. quicker, okay. and the ridges around the edge are going to uh, move. Same here, you're going to get okay. some jiggling okay. in the uh, layer as we do upgrade uh, whatever is going on okay. here. It'll seem like it's pulsing. The queen, in terms of injecting, if you look at something, you're going to know that he's spawning larva there because of these spores on the outside you'll know that that's happening and after a while those will shoot out obviously the spores onto the ground and that's how you're going to know uh, that's happening. Now the coolest one for probably all of them really and uh, the one that I saved for last year is the roaches and the roaches really do one of those really dramatic and frankly really important uh, changes. The normal roach is fairly pale in color. You're going to see mostly the black with a bit, a bit of obviously whatever your team color is. As those are sunk into the ground, you're going to see them that way if you have actual detection on them. But what uh, actually matters once you do the upgrades, the speed doesn't actually create the physical difference for us. But burrow, the ability to burrow and regenerate life and move underground is actually going to make the spines on top a fluorescent version, little neon version of whatever the color is for your team. And that's a really important one to have. It's going to let you know what the threat level is for these roaches to let you know when they just burrowed in front of you are they capable of continuing to walk underground or are they just going to be completely stationary? Obviously you're going to want detection in either case once you see them do that. Uh, note these little trails behind. You are going to be, as the opposite player, able to see, uh, even when you can't see the roaches themselves, you will see these breakups in the ground, not as dramatically, but as slightly dark spots in the ground and that's going to let you know they're there uh, even if you can't actually see the units themselves. So I'll just show you that on normal ground, you are going to see some of this discoloration behind them even if you don't have detection to see. Uh, similarly with the observer and any cloaked unit, you're not going to see this but you're going to see a slight blur on the screen which is a little more evident uh, as you move it around. 
So always keep an eye out for that blur and always keep an eye out for those marks on the ground uh, when you think that there may be something um, in the area that is worth detecting and picking up on. So those are all the visual cues that I can actually think of. And uh, I don't know that there's any others, but obviously if you've got any more out there that I haven't thought of, then definitely leave them in the comments and uh, I'll try and get on them. Um, I'm sure there are certain ones that aren't going to be displayable on this map here. Obviously the use of the Zalnaga Tower, most of those are falling apart and when a unit comes to it, it will rebuild itself and kind of be in intact form. That's going to vary map by map. Uh, other than that, I can't really think of any, but uh, that's a fairly extensive list of probably three dozen anyway. So I hope people, people do find that helpful. Um, I've never seen anywhere that explains all of them quite like that. I've seen a couple uh, charts that just show you pictures. So I just wanted to show it in live action. And I'm sure that 98% of you know 98% of these. But if I even pointed out one that you didn't know and it comes in useful in some situation, then great. So I hope that was helpful and thanks again for watching.